Hey folks, and welcome back to Creator Site Income. I'm Tyler, and today I have a really awesome interview for you. This was actually reminiscent to me of the interviews I did several years ago. I had a channel called Virtual School Assembly. It's still up in YouTube, but I'm not doing those interviews anymore. But I was interviewing Hollywood celebrities, professional athletes, and Olympians, and it was something that I looked forward to because I got to meet all these really cool people that I had already known about and, and pick their brains on things that I was interested in. And it was so much fun. And I did that several years ago and then kind of let it go and haven't done interviews for a while. And lately, as I've started doing interviews for this channel, I'm remembering why I loved doing interviews because I get to meet really interesting people, talk about things that I'm personally interested in, but also share advice that will benefit other people. And today was so fun. I don't know if I've had this much fun ever on an interview. I talked to Scott for, for this channel for a while, and then we ended the call and talked for another hour, hour and a half, just because we have so much in common. And, and I think most importantly, we have a similar mission. We want to help people who are struggling to get by, to be able to live a better lifestyle, to be able to work hard and earn extra income so that they can improve their quality of life. And Scott is really committed to that vision, as am I. And so it was really, really fun to talk about education, about the future of products and, and reviews and stuff like that. But today we are going to focus on something that I know almost nothing about. We're going to talk about buying and selling on eBay. And I learned so much from this interview. So I am excited to take you over right now to our interview with Scott. Just to get started, Scott, what I want to talk about first is I, we, we've connected with social media and I've watched a bunch of your videos. You've seen some of mine, but I've never talked to Scott, the person I've always interfaced with the cha -ching King. And so I have a few rapid fire questions just to get you to know you a little bit better. First, favorite band? Uh, Skid Row. Old soul here. How about do you have a favorite movie or television show? Firefly. Uh, Whoa, short, yeah, I know Firefly. Short Live series is probably my all time favorite. Yeah, and did the movies stack up to the series or how do you feel about the movie? Uh, I feel like they did the best they could given the parameters that they had, but no. Yeah, that, I think that's fair. If you had your ideal like last meal and dessert, what what are you going to eat for your last meal? Chinese food. I, you, you could pick any of them. And I don't eat a lot of sweets, but probably ice cream. Okay. I approve of your decisions. Oh, we can now <laughs> move forward with the interview. I feel like you've properly been vetted. You were going to shut it off and just walk away. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're not an ice cream eater, forget it, you know? <laughs> so we have a lot in common just because of our background in education. Can you let my audience know just kind of your trajectory as a, as a teacher, principal, up to superintendent? I, especially because while you kind of, what on paper looks like the normal trajectory, teach elementary school for a long time, principal, superintendent. You've done this in a small community. So your path has been a little bit different and unique. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Sure. I started teaching in 91 elementary school. And at the time that wasn't normal. There were uh, no men in my elementary program. There was one other guy later on. And uh, so I taught elementary school and the assumption was always from the people around me that I would go into administration. That wasn't my plan, but there was a distinct difference in pay. So I went through the administration program. And at the time, when I first became an assistant principal, elementary teachers were not considered uh, administrative quality. If you weren't a coach, you weren't considered, but I got a job anyway. And I ended up going on to elementary principal. And I spent seven years as an elementary principal. And when I was working on my superintendency, uh, the certificate for that, I the same thing I was told, you know, you have no coaching experience. You haven't been in a high school since you were cutting high school in the 80s. And uh, But I got a superintendent job. And then I spent 12 years as a superintendent in a, a district with, it's called Six Man in Texas, but I had 200 kids, give or take, pre-K through 12. Wow. I had the best job ever. So. Well, that sounds like it could be the best job ever, but it could also be the worst job because anytime you're in a small community, everybody knows everything about everyone. Did you experience that? And what did that look like it on the educational scale? Uh, so, so, as an educator, the downside to being in a district, uh, the district is Penelope, by the way, the downside to being in a district like this is I, I was almost finished with the doctorate and all I had left was the dissertation. And the way you finish your dissertation as a superintendent is you close the door, you tell people to leave you alone and you spend a few months, you write it and then you leave. Well, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. 
I just couldn't close my door. And, you know, so the kids would still come in and talk to me and I'm still doing, well, I'm not anymore, but I was still doing the FAFSA for every single kid that needed help. And, and then, you know, pretty quick, you're the cross X debate coach and you're doing cross country, which is funny because I ran in high school if I was chased, but not any further than that. So the small district, the downside is that you are genuinely married to the district while you're there. If, if you, if you care about doing it right on the upside is my son builds and repairs computers. And when we deliver them, I get paid partially in jelly. (laughs) Like I'm just telling you, homemade jellies and bukta and stuff like that. The people here in this community are fantastic. And I I think I was truly where I was supposed to be. So now I I know that something that most educators experience. And so I'm curious because you kind of transitioned out of education into this online world and to kind of facilitate that transition in this discussion. Can you talk a little bit about secondhand trauma and bring, you know, as you work with parents and students and they bring you all their concerns and their issues and you vet that as a principal, I'm sure you are invested. And that's really emotionally taxing. That's one thing about being a teacher or administrator is It's so emotionally draining. Then flip over to the kinds of things you're doing now. And do you experience anything like that? Or or how has that changed for you in your life? It's huge. And you don't know my background. My audience does. And my kids knew is that, you know, I grew up homeless and my dad had escaped from a federal penitentiary and I had an unconventional childhood. So when I got into education, I already had, I had enough trauma for everybody. So (laughs) for me, it was a matter of, I really just wanted to help kids, you know, and I, I, I am a firm believer and there are no excuses. Like if someone like me can do something, then I can help the kids see that too. When I retired from education and started on Instagram and then, then in YouTube, on YouTube, I teach uh, brand new people how to do, how to use the eBay platform. And my channel was just not doing much. It wasn't growing much because I kept focusing my videos on what do I need? How can I hit that search algorithm? How can I, around a thousand subscribers, I just quit. I was just like, who am I trying to help? And so I created this avatar in my head of just one person. And for me, that person was like a single mom at home, struggling to make ends meet, who's looking for help and hope. And I'm going to make a video for her. And, you know, oddly enough, that the kids that I taught are all in that 40-year-old range now. So it's the same person. And my channel started to grow when I started making videos that had nothing to do with helping me reach my goals, but helping other people reach their goals, which is exactly what I was doing in the school. So I don't know that I've changed anything Mm. other than the media, you know? Right. That's fascinating. It's interesting because my avatar is related, but different. As I think about my audience, what, uh, so I'm currently a a teacher and I love my job, but my biggest concern is, is something you've already addressed. Teachers aren't paid enough. We can't live the lifestyle that we've always envisioned for ourselves or for our families. And teachers are givers. I want to provide for my children. I want to provide for my wife. And so I've always had a side hustle and it's made it possible for me to live a really comfortable lifestyle. So my avatar is teachers and teachers that are overworked and underpaid. And I want to help them live this dream lifestyle without having to be rich and famous, just with a little bit of hustle. And and so I think we have a a huge overlap with with our audiences for sure. And that's probably why we became friends is (laughs) it's easy to see that we have a lot of the same vision for, for what we do with online. So I'm curious about your transition. You know, you're doing social media. First, why eBay? And was it financial? Actually, was there a, a difficult adjustment from working full time to now you're in charge of your your life? I'll, I'll address why eBay first. As a kid, I survived school by our bus got to the school early. I would run to the store. I would buy bubble yum and and then I would sell it. And that's how I paid for my school clothes. That's that's how I assimilated into normal normalcy, if that's a thing. We did eBay originally because I had a lumber mill and I mill lumber and I build furniture just as a hobby. And it was a way for me to pay for my woodworking fun by selling a few of the pens and things. So I started eBay way back. Shipping was cheap. I could ship board feet of lumber to Alaska. And and so I I had a, a relationship with eBay going way back. When you, as a teacher, I knew when I could retire. You know, you can look at the calendar and say, here's when I qualify. What would I need to do to be ready then? And my wife was already at home and she likes eBay because she doesn't want to talk to anybody. She doesn't want to see anybody. And uh, 
eBay is perfect for people with any sort of social misgivings at all. And so we went from just doing the woodworking stuff to like, she bought like wiglets and all this other stuff. And uh, it just grew from there. As far as the financial transition, in part, because I went into the superintendency, I made more. Like I just made more money. So my retirement, even though I retired a little bit earlier and the percentage is lower, my salary was fairly high and we have no debt. So that was the other thing we do, we did is I made sure that I don't even have a credit card or a car payment or any of those things that would keep me from doing exactly what I want to do. But the other thing that happened is by the, when I retired and then we, we were hustling on eBay, like, and we were selling a lot of stuff and, and, and getting smarter as we went, you know, learning a lot. And uh, pretty soon, as far as finances go, I would say within three months of retiring, I make more than I did as a superintendent. So financially, like, goodness, like, it's so been easy. How long was that in the making? So when you started on eBay, obviously, you're doing that while you were superintendent and, and finding your extra time to do that. Was it like a decade to get to where you could just jump in and, and go full time? Or how long did it take? No, and that's a great question. First, my wife gets the credit, not me. Before I retired, when you're in a district the size of Penelope, you wear a lot of hats. So you you aren't doing eBay on the side. Like at best... I would be the one emptying out the storage locker on a Sunday or something. Uh, but Melody did 90% of the work at that time. And, uh, but I would say four years, it wasn't a standing start. You know, we were already walking down that path. We already understood how to ship. We already knew the platform. We just needed to get a whole lot better at picking out items that had a high sell-through rate and a high return on investment. Now, as a, again, something that we share is being lifelong learners. And so you've done a lot of different things. You, you're a student, you, you study it out, you find the best ways to do it, then you try it out. And, and what I found with a lot of ways of making money online is there's a, a large period of time. So in this case with eBay, four years where you're learning how to do it, you're trying different things out, you're hustling. It's hard work work for four years, but you're hardly getting paid at all in the beginning. And then it ramps up and maybe you hit a hockey stick tipping point. Maybe you don't, but typically things improve to where you either say, this isn't worth the time I'm putting into it, or this is ready to explode. And as I've looked at a bunch of my side hustles, I was thinking about this on my run this morning. When we look at different things and think about life-changing money. And I think for most people, life-changing money would be an extra 100 bucks a week. So if you can make 100 bucks a, a week on top of what you're already getting, now you can live a different kind of lifestyle. And, and for me, blogging, YouTube, website design, those all had things where this incubation period of several years, and then once you finally hit and did it the right way, then it takes a few months and then you get to that where you're doing 100 bucks a week. It sounds like you followed a similar trajectory with eBay. I know you do a bunch of other things. Can you just quickly talk about some of the other ways you make money and was the ramp up time similar or were you able to hit kind of that $100 a week in a much shorter period of time with any other platform? First, the ramp up time on eBay is much faster than every other side hustle. So we were hitting $100 a day within, within the year. So it doesn't wow. have the ramp up that other things have. It's the fastest. It is not the most consistent, but it is the fastest. So uh, we do eBay, Poshmark, and Etsy, and then I do YouTube, and then the Amazon Influencer Program. I have signed up for the TikTok shop, but I haven't I haven't done a, a thing with it yet. For the most part, eBay is still the fastest money. Like if if I'm like, oh man, I really want this. To, I want to go to Galveston next week. If I want to go to Galveston, well, not next week. That's a little fast. But if I want to go to Galveston next month. I can have the money. I can list enough stuff on eBay and I can make an extra three or $4,000 for the month if I want to do the work. Not to get lost in this, and, and I have to throw this out as a caveat, I get a retirement check. So my risk, because I'm pretty risk averse, my risk is lower because I'm not going to be homeless with my retirement check. I right. would have to change some things. I, I, don't, I couldn't support the other people to the degree that I do, um, but... YouTube is a very slow ramp up. YouTube took me a long time. I don't have, I never had a video that did the hockey, which was, what a great analogy. I have never heard that. Like they don't use that in Texas, but the hockey stick, stick analogy, uh, I never had that. Mine was slow the whole time, but steady. 
uh, I focused on evergreen videos that are search engine optimized. So I do have videos with well over a hundred thousand views, but not like it's a pretty straight graph. Can I, uh, can I just ask you a little bit about that while we're talking about it? I know you have about 50,000 subscribers on your cha-ching king channel and that focuses mostly on ebay but you talk a little bit about a few of the other things that you've done i i've had a similar trajectory with some of my youtube channels where it's, it's just do a lot of videos and none of them go viral but they are pretty consistent and and that's become a nice little side income for me as well what was the point where youtube started making you like decent money like did you have 500 videos, 100 videos, like how much had you been doing or or maybe what period of time had you spent till you got to that point? Well, for me, it was, uh, I, it took me 10 and a half months to get monetized. And my first check was $150, which I thought was like slicker right. than butter on a bald monkey. I was like, that's awesome. My second month was $800. And, and, and then it rose to about 3000 a month. Wow. Now, if you have followed any of the, I keep getting hit with what they call invalid traffic. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of this? Oh, sure. Yeah. So like uh, last July, I lost 90% of my income overnight for six weeks. And um, I just dealt with another one. It wasn't quite as deep or as bad. It lasted about 10 days. So I don't even count on the YouTube money at all. all right. um, it's terrific. It is terrific. Like, and especially I pick up like 2000 subscribers a month and, um, I pick up, uh, I think I get, um, four or 5,000 views a day on average. So, I mean, there's decent money there and it's a business related channel. So the RPM is, if, if I'm not getting beat up, it's generally pretty good. Uh, but what I count on it as an, as a primary income not a chance. <laughs> no, but I think I think we have to recognize again for most people making a hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars a week that is big money. Even if it's yeah. not enough to support your lifestyle, it is enough to change your lifestyle, and and so we can't discount that. No, absolutely not. So l let's get back to eBay. Obviously, that's where your your bread and butter right now. That's where you make a a, a lot of your income. Is it a full-time gig? What What's entailed? If you want to make good money on eBay, a lot of it's the hustle. You just have to be willing to work. But what does a day look like for you? So for us, I have spent all of the time ramping up differently than anybody else. I don't focus on speed at all. I'm sure you've heard it. I'm not sure how it's worded. If you want to learn how to do something efficiently, follow somebody lazy. <laughs> so my right. whole goal with eBay has been to raise my average sale price without raising my cost price. And so that I don't have to work very much to make good money. So my average sale price is over $60. And so I can make a couple hundred dollars by listing two or three items a day. And so I would say between Melody and I, we spend 20 to 30 hours a week doing eBay. Okay. So less than part-time. Can can we break down those 20 to 30 hours? How much of that is spent in doing like product research or, or buying things to sell? And where are you going to get those things? Is it all off eBay or are you a picker or, you know, are you doing other things? And then how much of that is doing other things in, or, in order to sell your stuff? Like what what is involved if people want to make money as eBay sellers? Kind of where's the different time allotments? Okay. So, um, we spend, as far as picking, I'm a picker, like my whole life. I'm, I'm like looking for change on the sidewalk. I am, I am, I am searching all the time. So, but most of what I have bought in the last four years have, has been what I call private picks. People call me and say, Hey, will you come take a look and see if you want anything? And they do that in part because I'm in a small community where they're never going to invite somebody they don't know. Uh, and two, if I sell something much higher than what I expected, I will go back to the people and make it right. So they know I'm not going to intentionally take advantage of anybody. So I would say I spend five to 10 hours a week looking for stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I would say probably I should have included it in the time. I spend an hour a day shipping, like all the stuff we sold, I ship out every day. 
uh, but maybe an hour. So that's it's probably closer to 25 hours between the two of us. I would say we spend five to 10 hours a week listing items. As far as product research, you know, I'm married to somebody really smart and that helps a lot. <laughs> and she has a completely different interest than me. So between the two of us, we make one really smart person. And so we don't spend a lot of time researching until we come across a buy that includes a lot of stuff that we didn't know about. Hmm. So if I buy a bunch of something like the wiglets she bought, like I didn't know what a wiglet was, but now I do. <laughs> yeah. So have you found that as you've continued to work in this space that you've really kind of niched down in that there, there are product categories that you know a lot about. And so you instantly know if there's a good deal or are you still kind of a generalist where you're looking at everything? I, I am absolutely a generalist and um, my, uh, my wife, I, she is too, but we've done everything. Have you ever watched, are you old enough to have watched Cheers? Yeah, of course. You remember Cliff? Uh-huh. Yeah, like I'm Cliff. And like, <laughs> and like, so like I have this broad range of useless knowledge and if I don't know it, I'll make it up. Yeah, no, we enjoy the whole thing. Just the, That's cool. So... So, and, and this is not something I had planned on talking about, but you've mentioned your wife, Melody, several times. Is this something that you love doing together? Is this something that you've always done together? Because a lot of people, you don't want to work with family, right? Because when it comes to business and, and close relationships that can get in the way, what what's your relationship been like as you've worked together with eBay? Um, yeah, no, we work together. I, I do 90% of it now, but... Um, one of the things that eBay allows is, uh, Melody's dad had a stroke and back in 2016 and it changed our schedule, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not so much that her dad needs help, but her mom needs help. And so we make allowances for that because they live about an hour away. Um, but no, she loves it too. She is not anti-social makes it sound like you're not nice. She's like way nicer than me. But like going to a public place is not her thing. She's not ever going to do a private pick because she's never going to talk her way into a place. Um, we just complement each other really well. I'm better at the things that she will never do. And and um, she's way more consistent than I am. She's not going to dive into 15 different projects. Right. <laughs> well, it's, it's fun to hear that because me and my wife are, are the opposite. I'm the introvert and don't want to do anything so or whatever, which is ironic since I'm also a school teacher and do things like this. Uh, but I can do this in the comfort of my man cave, you know? Yeah. And so it's fun to hear how other relationships work with that. Uh, and to see the kind of success that you're having now, um, I love that. Now, for people who want to get started in eBay, one of the big hurdles is you're buying things, right? So you're you're investing into this process. And, and that's really scary for a lot of people. Any advice that you would give to someone who's thinking of, of getting started and just is risk averse. They don't, they don't want to buy something that they're stuck with. I have the best advice for this it be, it, because I truly believe it. Don't spend a nickel. Don't spend anything to get started. If I came to your house today, I could walk through your house and I could pick out a month's worth of inventory that you probably wouldn't miss. Mm -hmm. And some of that comes from, you know, I spent a long time looking now and I know what to look for, but every average American home, now there are people without anything and we need to address that too, but but almost every home, it, 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 in the US we have stuff, we just have stuff and we don't need all the stuff. And so you start without buying anything, no cost to entry, you get in there and you start going through the stuff that, the jeans you bought that didn't fit, the shoes that weren't comfortable, and you start with the things around your house and don't spend anything until you have an income coming in. There mm -hmm. are people that they don't have stuff. Like they're truly, I I have been homeless. And so like, I didn't have it. What I would do, of course, I started with mowing lawns, but God, that was just awful. What I would do today, <laughs> if I had to start from scratch, I'd probably go to like the Goodwill bins, which is a Goodwill outlet store. Mm -hmm. And I would work all day finding until I came across something super cool. And I would sell it to somebody in the Goodwill bins who's also looking for it so that I don't have to pay for it to get it out of the door. 
So I would make money and have money in my hand before I dove into eBay. Hmm. But if I had to start from scratch again, it wouldn't be comfortable. And it wouldn't be like the shows where you see like in 30 days, they've got a million dollars. But I would work towards not being homeless again really quick. <laughs> Scott, I really appreciate your time today. And this is a, a really good place to start. Well, we're ending, but a good place to start as far as if you are looking at getting started as an eBay seller, you just got some gold handed over to you from Scott. And now the next step is to go over to his YouTube channel, Cha-Ching King. We'll link it up. Uh, Scott, what about other socials? I know you're active on Instagram. Where else can people find you? Uh, Instagram is probably the fastest way to reach me. Send me a personal message over there. And I do try to answer every question I get on YouTube, but it's getting harder. Like <laughs> it's getting harder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you send me a note on Instagram, I'll catch it. Thanks, Scott. Really appreciate your time today. All right. Thanks, Tyler.